So now I'm testing this texture, testing the tiling, so I'm going to repeat UV2, test it, P3 and 3, hit G to repeat the command of testing the texture, 512 by 512. I'm going to uh, move that down and go ahead and uh, default connections to this new file. And now uh, we're going to set up the shader for this very basic wood floor setup. So I'm going to uh, set this to sRGB gamma compensation, add a file in there, just a simple wood texture, increase the reflectivity a little bit, so 0.95 reflectivity and I found that uh, glossiness of 0.3 is fine, increase the samples, index of refraction 3 and use the Fresnel reflection. So I've simply added a bump map. Now I'm using the MIA round corners node, which uh, brings about a faked bevel look on the edges. You really won't notice it here, but uh, it is there. And I think the radius, the radius there is based on world space, so 0.25. So now here's the shading network for this little uh, vase here that's on the table. Nothing too complicated, just a uh, couple standard nodes and a basic file texture. Uh, converted to luminance, so it was a blue, but now it's uh, gray. A little bit of contrast applied. So now in this, uh, I'm just simply doing some automatic mapping here and selecting these UVs and just going to uh, line them a little bit better. Now I'm going to transfer these UVs. So now I'm using a sampler info node. I'm going to remove that uh, place to detection. Now I'm going to take the sampling info facing ratio into the v-coordinate of the ramp, and by default ramps are v-coordinate ramps. So inside here I'm going to edit, edit the actual little swatches of this ramp. Now that's the bottom color. Here's the uh, next color. Uh, picking that one down there, and I'm going to change it a little bit. You can see that uh, I'm just changing the weight, a little bit of roughness, so add a little bit of orange layer diffuse in there. Reflectivity at 0.2, glossiness really low, glossy samples at 8, but the glossy samples won't be uh, respected because highlights only is on. Now you can see that I need to refresh the IPR because uh, that image down there is not accurate. It's not uh, the proper result. But anyway, I've added a bump map. Now I'm refreshing the IPR. Now you can see a more uh, the proper uh, representation of this particular shader. So now here's a pillow, and I'm using a, a, a cloth procedural texture. Just changing the settings and playing with it using a bump map applying it as a bump map. So for these pictures I'm going to use a layer texture. You can see that I'm bringing down the alpha a bit so we can see through it. Uh, again, applying the sRGB gamma compensation, adding a file in here, standard 8-bit image, uh, regraphing that network. You can see that through the gamma, you can see the picture behind it. I'm going to create a ramp this ramp will be a radio ramp. You can see that I'm uh, up and out alpha into the alpha of the layer texture. So this ramp is just going to be a black and white ramp, circular, smooth, interpolation. You can see down there the IPR is updating. I'm going to add a little bit of detail inside there. And finally, one more black swatch at a position 5 by 5. So bring it down to black, and here's the result. So here's a render of all three picture frames. And of course, the other two ones are using the layer texture as well. 
So here's the Final Gather settings for this particular scene, just a simple frozen Final Gather map. So here's the result of the ambient occlusion pass. And you can see to the right in the attribute editor, you can see the settings for the ambient occlusion shader. And I've applied this manually to the objects in this layer so that I can respect the refraction in that table there. And so there's the table. So now in a new layer, I'm going to plug in reflection result into the out color of a surface shader. And I'm going to create a new lens shader. It's going to be a MIP render subset, which is a production shader library node. I'm going to enable it as a layer override, copy the shading engine name, go ahead and focus back on the subset and paste that name in there. And now what the render subset does is it allows you to simply render exactly what you want. So in this case, I'm going to simply render what is applied, uh, what that surface shader is applied to. And it's really useful for this sort of thing. And so I'm only getting the reflection of that glass. So uh, if you haven't used MIP render subset, you really should try it out. So now I'm going to do the same thing here with the sky. I'm going to isolate the sun, the direct light. Now I've also created a light portal layer. Simply try to isolate the lighting, uh, direct irradiance of the light. I didn't use it at all in the compositing stage, but it's, it's sort of nice to uh, get as many layers as you can out before you composite, just in case. I also rented out a facing ratio pass, as well as a matte pass, but I didn't, again, I didn't use any of these in the compositing stage, but it's, it's again, just in case, it's good to rent out as many passes as you have time for. Now I'm in the compositing stage, I'm going to grade this ambient occlusion pass a little bit, increase the gamma, which increases the midtones of the image. Now it's going to be piped in as a mask to a color correct, I'm just going to increase the saturation in the areas that it affects and now bring down the gain and that's where the actual ambient occlusion effect comes in. Now if I would have rendered out an indirect pass uh, then I would have, this would have been more properly applied but I did not render out an indirect pass. I'm going to multiply these two results together. Okay so here's the window, the window pass. You can see that I'm gaining up the result there. Here's the reflection of the window. Same thing, simply tweaking the gain and getting a result that I think looks better than the regular render. You can, you can adjust all these settings in Maya, but it's kind of nice to render out the images and then uh, be able to see the results in real time in the compositing application. So here's relighting. Simply taking the mask that I rendered from the sky and increasing the saturation a bit, bringing down the gain, and it's simply going to be added so you can see that that increases the light hitting the surface there and that looks a little bit a little bit better now although I didn't use this mask you can clearly see how that by using a, a mask a relighting mask you could change the color of the light but I didn't use that so now here's the HDR on lens effects doing a little bit of tone mapping with a tone map gizmo that you can download just search tone map for nuke. So here's a color lookup. Just going to increase, uh, bring up the midtones a little bit. I'm going to apply a little bit of chromatic aberration. Here's a glow, uh, but it's a glow that has tolerance. So I'm going to increase the value so I can s clearly see uh, where the glow is applied. I'm going to increase the tolerance until I see mostly just the hot areas of the image and now decrease the brightness so that uh, it's only a minor effect. Now here's some film grain. Again, try to keep it minor. And if you have a plate, then you might want to match the film grain of that plate. So here's some vignetting, and you can see the effect being applied. Just going to decrease the softness so that I can clearly see where the effect is. And scale it a little bit. Now once I like the scale, I'm going to increase the softness again. And again, this is a very subtle effect, so uh, well, I think it should be subtle, but you can do however you want. 
and this is the result that I got. And I'm going to crop the image to 1920 by 1080, and uh, that's it.